So the music band is going to play very slowly in the beginning, and then we'll come in. Okay. <clears throat> That's the face mask. <laughs> I'm live. <laughs> Getting ready to start the show. Today we'll be talking about Montgomery Care County Cares Act today. You're listening to The Real Rhythm of the City, AM 1210 and FM 102.3. It is a beautiful Saturday. You know what day it is when you hear that music. We're getting ready to step <laughs> in the name of love. Yes. Dr. Richmond, Footsteps for Life, how are you? I am blessed and highly favored this morning. I am breathing on my own. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And, we, and we don't take that for granted, do we? Not, not anymore. Yes, not yes, anymore. absolutely. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. You're here on WDAO on the fourth Saturday yes, of the month, and it is the fourth Saturday, yes. and we're happy to have you with us, and we've got some exciting things that we're going to chat about for the next hour. Yeah, so as you can see, I've started a new custom face mask business. And for <laughs> those that want to see you right now, can you tell them how they can see you? Well, to see me for the face mask? Well, right now on Facebook. Oh, I'm, right now I am live yes. on Facebook. That's right. Uh, I think I'm on either Richmond Foot and Ankle Clinic. Or I'm on Tanisha Richmond. If you go on Google me, oh no, Facebook me, um, you can find me. I am streaming live. And also later, this will be taped and put on my podcast, which will air on Spotify awesome. probably in the next few weeks. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, it is a beautiful day. It's a few minutes after 12. You'll be with us until 1. Yes. But you've got a special guest here. Yes. So I have Edwina Blackwell Clark. She is the Director of Communications for the local Alzheimer's Association, and she came on today to educate the public, especially the African-American community, of how Alzheimer's affects us as a disease. Good morning, Edwina. How are you? Fine. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming on. I like to have experts. You know, you know how black people are. We got cousins and nieces and nephews, boo-boo and them that... Don't have no medical training, but they always want to give you some medical advice. Yes. <laughs> so I like to have the experts that can tell people how these about medical things, especially now what's going on in our country with non-medical people giving medical advice too. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm hey, I'm not a med I'm not a medical professional, but I do work for the association. And but you you have some direct you have quite, quite a few <laughs> quite a bit of information here. Yes. So tell me about Alzheimer's. What exactly is it? So um, Alzheimer's is a fatal, we, let, let's start there. It is a fatal and it is a progressive disease of the brain. Okay. Um, what it does is it causes uh, problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. And uh, the symptoms normally kind of s develop really slowly and then they get worse over time, uh, becoming severe enough to interfere with uh, daily tasks. And so um, that's important because we want people to know that Alzheimer's and dementia is not normal aging. That is not normal aging. So if you see your loved one experiencing things like that, you must take them to the doctor to get tested. You must take them to the so doctor. So when you say it's not normal, what's normal like dementia? So uh, that's a great question. So first of all, um, Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. That's the first thing. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. Um, Alzheimer's is the most common type of dementia. Probably about 60 to 80% of uh, dementia cases are Alzheimer's. Uh, just, just we have something that we call the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's. And let me just give you some examples. So if you misplace your keys, um, but you know, in a couple hours, you were able to retrace your steps and figure out where they're at. That's normal. Okay. If you misplace your keys and you find them in the freezer, <laughs> you That's know, that is not normal. <laughs> that is not normal. So, um, you know, if you, if you, uh, 
going to a new place and you, you get lost and you know, you're not using your GPS or something like that and you ask for uh, directions, that's normal. Okay. If you uh, cannot remember how to go or come back to a place that is very familiar to you, if you're getting your nights and your days mixed up, Okay. If you are uh, doing your your um, your financial business and you're writing multiple checks to pay a bill that you paid before because you can't remember how you did that, those things are not normal. Those things are not normal. So I would so, so we say if you notice any kind of uh, cognitive impairment with your loved one, absolutely take them to the doctor. Absolutely to get checked. So. I guess for a caregiver or a child or uh, or someone that's older, what point should they say, Daddy or Mom, I need to take you to see your primary care doctor about this? They should take them as soon as they as soon as they um, notice some changes, and and I should say that a cognitive assessment is part of is paid for and is part of Medicare. Oh, it is? Yes, yes. Okay. You, everybody it can get an annual cognitive assessment for free. Okay. So I, I just, first, we want to know, we want to let that, What about that Medicaid? Out. Medicaid? Don't know about Medicaid. I don't want to speak towards that. But um, that that is, so that is part of your a wellness. Oh, okay. It's part of a wellness exam. Okay. So, so please know that. But the, here's, the, here's the importance. So this is what, I was actually talking to a um, neurologist uh, last week. And this is what he said. Um, with he, he made the analogy with cancer. Okay. With cancer, you want as a doctor, you want to make sure that you're um, hopefully diagnosing someone who has cancer in stage one or two because okay. they have more treatment options. Okay. At, for Alzheimer's, if you if you bring them to the doctor and the and the uh, doctor has determined that they have Alzheimer's, there's a lot of steps before Alzheimer's. There is mild cognitive impairment. There's just general dementia. But if they've got Alzheimer's, that means it has really progressed. That 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 met the what's going on in the brain. It, it is a physiological thing. What's going on in the brain has progressed, and at that point. There's, there are, right, right now, we have drugs that deal with the symptoms of Alzheimer's. Uh -huh. We do not have drugs that cure it. So if, you, if you're bringing them where their symptoms are severe, then the drugs, the limited drugs that we have, won't help them as well as if you brought them early on and, okay. and something was diagnosed. And you said Alzheimer's is fatal. Why is it fatal? Because right now there we are still there is no cure for Alzheimer's. We are uh, right now, as I said, the only drugs that we have for Alzheimer's address symptoms. Okay. Uh, modify symptoms. Okay. They don't address the progression of the disease, the course of the disease. And so we, we've got some. We've got there's some exciting things that are happening right now. In fact, um, uh, the F there is one drug, uh, Biogen, and his company has. Uh, just recently, a, a month ago, submitted to the FDA a drug which, if approved, would be the very first drug that would even address the course of the disease. It won't, it won't cure it, but it will it slow, slow it, it slow right. the disease. It slow so it. when you say it's fatal, is it because I know like a lot of my patients, their caregivers say like towards the end, they stop eating, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. just see, almost like cease to exist. They just, they don't function. I mean, what physically kills them? That's a, good, that's a good question. So, um, you know, it's certainly if uh, there are stages of the disease, and certainly if someone is in the latter stages of the disease, uh -huh. uh, they forget how to swallow. Oh, it's difficult, wow. It's difficult for them to um, eat and drink. They'll, if they're at that level, uh, they're probably on pureed food or, or something like that. Or peg tube, like, uh, like a uh, Yes, line. Poss absolutely, possibly. Because um, um, when, you, when you forget how to swallow, there is concern that when you're uh, digesting food, that it doesn't, it goes into your lungs. And oh, they, they and aspirate. They aspirate, yeah. absolutely. Yes. They aspirate. And so we don't want to do that. So um, there's all sorts of things. That, so the, the brain, the, the problems that are going on in the brain abs absolutely 
impact the rest of the body. So there, there you know, there could be lots of reasons at the end uh-huh. that they die of, but Alzheimer's, well, absolutely, it is, once again, it is a fatal disease. Yeah, unfortunately, it is a fatal disease. And, and that's, yeah. that's important. Uh, it is very sad, but that's important for us to tell people that because what we want people to do is understand the stages of the disease yes. and plan appropriately. Plan, so, yes. Okay, so yes. For, for people with Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, nationwide, um, 83% of them are cared for at home. Yes. 83% are cared for at home with uh, their loved ones, their family, their yes. friends, uh-huh. unpaid caregivers. In the state of Ohio, we say about 70% of the people in Ohio that have Alzheimer's or uh-huh. dementia are cared for at home. However, if your loved one, if those if those um, stages start to develop and your loved one um, is, you know, you've got to help. I mean, there's, there's, there's a point where your loved one possibly could need a More higher care. level yeah. of care higher, than you're, yeah, able right. to you're able do. to do physically. You, yeah, physically. Do you, for you them. You can't. Pick them up and t- take yes. them to the restaurant. You, and you have to you lock have, them down exactly. so they don't roam. There's all, and, yes, all, yeah. all, all those sorts of things. And so, um, generally speaking, there's really about three or so ways that you can pay for going into a nursing home. Okay. One of them is private pay. Okay. You just pay out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the other is if you have long-term care insurance. And okay. most of us do not have long-term care insurance. I'll just say that. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, the third way is to be Medicaid eligible. Medicaid, Medicaid not Medicare. Not Medicare, Medicaid eligible. Okay. Which is, a, which is a financial eligibility piece. Okay. So if you have assets or, or you know, you don't want to spend down the, the money that your yes. loved one has saved, uh-huh. you have to plan for that. You okay. got to, you got to, there are some financial things and legal things that you must plan for, whether it's if they need a higher level of care, how I'm going to pay for it. Uh, what is their end of life wishes? Yes. So that, that you, you know, what is the health care power of attorney? Yes. Uh, who's going to, <laughs> all, all of those things that yes, we talk about. That you don't, that we don't we talk don't about talk until about, it's too late. But it's critical as if you're dealing with someone with uh, Alzheimer's, yeah. because once again, those things are going to come into you're you're going to have to deal deal with, with it at some point. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, um, so it's so cri- it's just so critical to don't be afraid to take your loved one to the doctor to get tested and to, and how do they get tested for that? That's a great question. So right now, there's multiple things. So um, most people, the first level for their general practitioners, because most people go to a general uh, practitioner, um, they'll do a cognitive, they'll start with a cognitive assessment and a mental assessment. They'll ask some questions. There's a set qu- number of questions. Yeah, like who's them. the president? Yeah, yeah, things yes, like they'll, that. They'll ask, you know, what? make sure they understand what day and time. What year what, it what, is. What's it they'll ask some questions. But then, and this, is, this gets to part of the research where we're going to, then they'll either do like a PET scan or they'll do a lumbar puncture or uh-huh. something like that. Those things are invasive. Yes. And um, some insurance don't want to pay for that. Yes. So one of the things that's going on in terms of Alzheimer's research is process and progress towards a simple test, a biomarker, a blood test. Oh, blood test. So that's one of the that's one of the new frontiers that's happening in Alzheimer's research right now is can we develop because we need a simple, affordable, non-invasive, yes. but very accurate way to determine if someone has Alzheimer's and dementia. And so there's some great progress that's happening in that area towards developing what we call a biomarker, which is a blood test. So Which just so is, uh, like a blood, like a blood draw. Yes, yes. So much you have easier. to go like to CompuNet or somewhere. Yes, and they have to yes, draw blood yes. for that test. But it'll be much easier than, than doing a PET a scan. Bar, a PET scan. Like a, bar it's, bar. now, it's, most people don't know what a PET scan is. <laughs> well, go ahead, tell, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, a PET scan is similar to an MRI, um, but you basically have to go to the hospital, and they, I. I I think your PET scan, you go on a tube too, like an MRI, but you have to be put into a device and I think given dye as well 
where they actually can see the soft tissue. It'll actually like glow. Um, they give you something kind of radioactive dye that goes into you, and then they put you in a machine that can pick up the cells and the tissue that sucks up that dye. And then they can see it in three dimensions. So they can see your brain when they're done in three dimensional slices. So like a radiologist, um, not a resident like you see on them TV shows, a radiologist will read the PET scan and then send the results probably to the primary care doctor and or neurologist if the uh, patient now has a neurologist for their um, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's so interesting. Um, actually, this is a great time to talk about research because next week is uh, the Alzheimer's Association International Conference. And that is the world's largest uh, gathering of uh, clinicians and researchers mm -hmm. about uh, dementia science. And uh, what, they're, what they're saying now in terms of Alzheimer's research is by the time the symptoms are, the outward symptoms are showing, uh -huh. um, there, there has been physiological changes in the brain as far as 20 years before. So right, let so me ask you correct. about early onset Alzheimer's. Yes. Like you hear that, I forgot who had it. That was in the media. He was young. That's right. That's and right. It, and so it, most people, most people that have Alzheimer's um, are 65 and up. Okay. Age is the greatest risk factor for Alzheimer's. Age is the greatest. What risk about factor for race Alzheimer's. or diet? Uh, we're going to go there too. <laughs> uh, but you asked about early onset. Early onset means that they got the diagnosis prior to being 65. Oh, prior to yes, 65. Yes, earlier. Okay. Earlier. Earlier. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And you you ask about race and diet. So let's let's talk about that. Okay. You know, um, for African Americans, elderly, af older African Americans, yes, they are t almost two times more likely to get Alzheimer's than their white peers, than older white. Uh, Americans and and I will tell you why. We'll, okay, go tell there. me why. We're tell me why. I want to know. know uh, for uh, for Latinos, uh -huh. they are almost one and a half more times okay. more likely to get that. So okay. let's talk about the African Americans. Uh, we're trying to figure that out, but there are some risk factors that we have identified. Okay, and that is um, health. Mm -hmm. It is socioeconomic. Like specifically areas. when health. Yes. What, so let's talk about health. Comorbidities. So, um, we like to say um, what's good for the heart is good for the brain. Okay. So when African Americans have a higher risk uh -huh. for diabetes, uh -huh. a high blood pressure, okay. cholesterol. Oh, high cholesterol. High them, cholesterol. Them pig feet. Them <laughs> pig feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> for, for those things, those things, those things can drive what we call vascular dementia. Okay. It was so interesting. I um, interviewed a, a woman, who, a granddaughter, whose grandmother had strokes, uh -huh. and then it went into dementia. She so can you dementia. explain what is vascular dementia? Sure. Vascular, which is another type of dementia. You know, we said we said that um, Alzheimer's is the 60 to 80%. Okay. Vascular dementia is the next most common type of dementia. Okay. And it is normally occurs when there's some type of vascular event, a stroke, uh, you know, a heart attack, you know, okay. something like, like that. Can it be like a blockage in the brain too? Don't know that. I don't, I don't want to speak to her. Okay. That. But it's <laughs> more like a, most likely yes. from a stroke. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And that's, that's what we call vascular dementia. So, um, that's huge. As you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, yes. diabetes, yes. uh, they are rampant in our community, not just in our community, but they are rampant in our community. In America. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And so that's, that's, that is, that, that's part of the risk factors. Okay. In terms of the socioeconomic piece, um, Many of our folks may not have health insurance. Yes. Uh, many of our folks might have health insurance, but they don't want to go to the doctor. Yes, and, and they mistrust of, exactly. of doctors Absolutely. because of the Tuskegee experiment. Absolutely. Yes. So when you think about that factor also, that's yeah. a, that is a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. So we talked earlier about, um, so when we look at African Americans, so um, they're less likely to be diagnosed. Yes. When they're diagnosed, they are normally further along in, yeah, in terms in the of progression. the disease, in yeah. the progression of the mm -hmm. disease. You know, um, it, it is, the, the, 
there's still, um, and this is just not with the African American community, but there's still a stigma about yes. telling people about they've got Alzheimer's or dementia. They're still like, oh, you know, that's grandma. grandma all right. Right. Exactly. Mama, mama keep leaving the house at night, but she all right. 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 Exactly. tired to the. I've actually exactly. had my mom. She's a nurse, and she would tell me about friends or families that would strap their parents to the bed at night because oh yeah. they roam. Yes, because they would roam at night. Yeah, so that so that definitely is a symptom of Alzheimer's. Yes. So um, just addressing that piece, uh, six in ten people with with Alzheimer's will wonder. Yeah, six in ten. Oh, I thought you were saying the times. No, 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 no. no. Six <laughs> out of ten people. Six out of ten people will wander. Yes, and, and you so, see them on the news all the yes. time. Yes. Oh, it's so, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. So you gotta, you have to, you gotta, if you're caring for your loved one, you, you gotta prepare for that. Yes. You know, there's there's certain things that we talk about. You know, putting an alarm on your door. You know, putting the locks up a little high so it's not exactly yeah. the right thing. Yeah. You know, all you know, doing a medical alert or something. Yeah. That. But. I mean, you have to, uh, and this is what we tell in terms of caregivers. We tell them you've got to understand the disease and yes. understand what's coming. Yes. So that you can prepare. prepare. Yes. So that you yes. can prepare and keep your loved one uh, as safe as possible and provide them the best amount of care that you're able to do with yes, them. Sir. Yeah, because I know I, you know, being a podiatrist, I take care of probably half my practice is 50 and older. Mm -hmm. And then I have usually my 70 and 80 and older patients usually come in with a caregiver. Mm -hmm. And I've actually seen patients progress through dementia. And actually I have a patient, um, actually she doesn't come, the daughter comes to my foot spa. Mm -hmm. And I always tell the caregivers, you have to take care of yourself. You have to care for the caregiver because you, you're the person may be gone, and then you're next because yes. you're you've taken yes. yourself out, taking care of people. Absolutely. And actually, we went through that with my grandfather. Um, my mother had him in the home. He had a stroke. He had um, aphasia. He couldn't speak. He couldn't swallow on his own. He had a peg tube. I remember. I remember my grandpa. He always wanted peanut butter. Then he would choke out on it. I'm like, Grandpa, you can't have peanut butter. I want peanut butter. No, yeah. <laughs> no, Grandpa, you can't. Yeah. But he always wanted peanut butter. Then he, we, you know, he starts choking. Yeah. And um, but I remember when she finally reached the point where she had to put him in the nursing home because actually, all of, I'm the oldest child, so I was going in. I was giving, changing his peg tube. We were changing. Like, she would change his diaper and all that, but she was coming home from working and then having to be a caregiver, too. And I don't remember her, us having home health back then. That was, like, the 90s in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. And um, But I remember when she had to put him in the nursing home, she felt guilty yes, because... Absolutely. She had to put him in the nursing yes, home. Yes, absolutely. So let me talk a couple about a couple of those things. The first thing is, if you are caring for a loved one at your home, we want to make sure that you connect with the area agency on aging. Okay, that's now, first thing. So because, can they just Google them? Yes, or? they can. They they can. Please connect with the area agency on aging because they, um, you know, one of the one of their main purposes is to help seniors stay in their home as long as possible. Yeah. So there could be grants, there could be money, there could be supplies that can be paid for Okay. Uh, that would help you. There could be an opportunity for a grant to help you to uh, put the person in an adult daycare, which is a daytime program yes. that can give them some activities and give you so um, a break. So a break. Yes. I say, give you a well, break. yeah, I, give, honestly, you they break. need you need so, a break. Um, you know, the, the other thing also is um, for for caregivers, um, there is uh, something we call respite. Yes. And I don't know if everybody knows what respite is. Yeah, explain there. the difference between respite and hospice. Is that oh, sure. Difference? There's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, respite is basically a short-term uh, reprieve. So if, like, if you're going on vacation okay. or you want, uh, you've got some special events for a weekend and you, you need someone to watch your loved one for a weekend, uh -huh. there, are, um, there are some facilities 
in uh, Montgomery County and the region, which offer respite so that your, per your loved one can go and stay there just for a short period of time. Are they open they now back. due to the virus? Don't know about it. That's a great question. Okay. Because because I was getting ready to go to talk also about, go back to adult daycare, because that's part of the problems with COVID. Adult day centers are not open yeah, right now. Yeah, they're not they're open. Not, they're yeah. not open right now. Yeah. And so that, that is a problem. But, but, not, but it's not COVID. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to a point where yeah. the society will open up a little bit more. I want caregivers who are caring for their loved ones at home to know that those three things. One, please connect with the Area Agency on Aging to see what resources could be helpful to you. Two, there is respite. And three, um, there is adult day centers that are available for your loved one to go to their day. Now, you mentioned uh, the part about um, people being concerned about putting their loved ones in a nursing home. Yes. Uh, you know, that um, I, I, my mother and my grandmother both had a die from Alzheimer's. And, okay. Um, we personally in our family had to make that decision, and that it, was, it was yes, difficult. Yes, it is. It was very, very difficult. Um, but at some point, um, when you think about what is best for the person. Yes you'll recognize, you'll know that um, you cannot provide the level of care that they need. That they need, that yes. That they need. Yes. And I, so that's how yes. I would always talk to people about that choice, is what is best for the person, that level of care, you know, the specialized um, beds, the pureed food and the, the and the rotating the ro them so they yes. don't get the bed sores and yes. all that kind of all, stuff. All of those sorts of things are um, critically important for care. And so, um, you know, when we when we look at caregivers, oh my goodness, you know, well, we say generally speaking that um, on average, people that are diagnosed with Alzheimer's could live, you know, six to eight to ten years. However. There are many people that can live 20 years after the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so um, in, in the case of my mother, she lived 15 years after wow. her diagnosis. Yeah. So you think about that in terms of the disease progressing and that period of time. So what we find is for caregivers, they're exhausted. Yes. They are depressed. Yes. They feel isolated. Yes. They, you know, they, all, all I see those, them when they come to my all office. All those things, you know, yeah. they're trying to work. You know, the, I mean, there's a high percentage of caregivers that are in the sandwich generation. So they got kids and they're trying to take care of their mother or father or their yeah. grandparents. Yes. They're working uh -huh. too. I mm -hmm. mean, there's high, there's a high percentage. And I, I'm sorry to remember those percentages of uh, people that are working caregivers yeah. who have to go in late, um, have to, you know, uh, have to leave early, yeah. uh, decide to retire or decide they just have to go to part time because yeah. the caregiving responsibilities are so huge. Yes. Uh, and let me just say for caregivers, we don't, we don't, don't do it by yourself. Try not to do it by yourself. Yeah. You've got to uh, try to find a way to elicit um, your friends, what's a support system? Friends, family, family, home health, family, home health, the church folks. I mean, you know, you got you got it's a, village. It's, it's a village. It it's, takes it's a village. Well, it's actually reversing. Yes. Yes. You need, you need a village. And, yeah. You know, and and when we talk about caregiver burnout, you know, we really talk about you know you gotta find a time for yourself. Yes, a woosa, woosa. Yes, it's so so very important. You have to learn about the disease so that you understand when you see a new behavior, you know that that's connected to the disease. You know that's not the person. No. So you know if if the if the if you're seeing the person speaking out or their personality has changed or, or they whatever, become violent. Yes, that, <laughs> I've heard some, that a lot. Of they that happens to some. Doesn't happen to all. But yeah, but to yeah, they you know violent. how to deal with it. Uh, you know, so I, 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 I tell me William what, but I'd love to talk about the free resources that we have in education resources that we have. To be well, I think we're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we can talk about that. This right. has really been an invigorating conversation because I'm starting to get flashbacks from all the different experiences 
I've had actually have an employee that's dealing with this and she's had to come in late and actually the patient used to the, her the person she takes care of is my patient too so we've gone through the progression of the disease and I see it actually probably monthly when her grandmother's has episodes mm -hmm. so yeah so when you would come back we're going to talk some more about it and get into more detail because I think this is something um, that's really neglected and not really addressed in our community um, because like of the stigmatism and you know and 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 I think it's also a thing with us we always see ourselves as strong and you know asking for help is a sign of weakness so when we come back from break, we'll talk some more.